Hey y'all, this is your boy Neil Retella back with another live TikTok video. Good morning, y'all, and good night to some of you guys. Maybe where you're at, you maybe it's nighttime where you're at, but good morning because it's morning over here. All right. Um, as you brothers and sisters are coming into the chat room, the website is www.footworkministries.com. And my YouTube channel is Neil Aubrey Taylor. So when you guys get a chance, you can check out the YouTube channel. Usually when I do live, I put the replay on the YouTube channel. Okay, so you can check my previous lives that I've done on here. It's on the YouTube channel at Neil Aubrey Taylor. And the website is www.footworkministries.com where you guys could get prayers, listen to prayer recordings, and much more. Okay, now um, today's video, we're going to talk about the living waters of God. We're going to go to scriptures and we're going to interpret the scriptures and we're going to get the revelations, right? So if you have your Bibles, let's go to John 4 and we're going to start at verse 6, okay? So get your Bibles if you have your Bibles with you, right? And before we even start anything, we must give shout outs to the Most High. Right, so let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, I come before you right now as your humble servant, Neil. I pray on behalf of my viewers and myself right now who are in this chat room right now. I ask that you cover each and every one of us in the blood of Jesus from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Father God, whatever the message and the revelation that you may have for the viewers today, Father God, I ask that you relay it through your servant, Neil. Father God, I ask that. If anyone is in the chat room who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, Father God, that then when they receive this message, Father God, that they'll be convicted in their hearts and they'll repent from their evil ways and turn on to you as their Lord and Savior. I decree and declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's talk game. So we go to John 4. Let's start at verse 6. This story is about the woman at the well. I'm pretty sure some of you guys are familiar with that story. So let's give you the revelation, right? Now it says, Now Jacob well was there. Jesus was there for being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There coming a woman of Samaria to draw water, Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink, for his disciples were going away onto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Right? So this story right here, God is asking the lady for a drink. The lady is like, How are you asking me for a drink? The Jews don't associate with the Samaritans. So let's see what Jesus says in response to that. Right? And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knew it, the gift of God, and who it is that said it unto thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. What is today titled? The living waters of God. Now, before we go any further into this story, because we had verse 11, so keep that in mind. And remind me, guys, so I could get back on track John 4 verse 11 right so let's stop there for a quick bit Jesus said unto her if thou knew it the gift of God and who it is that said unto thee give me to drink thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water so the woman is not aware that Jesus Christ is there but she thinks it's a totally different dude she's like oh I don't know who you are why are you asking me for water Right now, look at the well of Jacob as symbolic of the the waters that's physical water. Right, we go there, we get something to drink, and we always need to get more water because we're always going to be thirsty. Right, so look at Jacob's well as a symbol of something even more profound. But we're going to look at it from the physical aspect. Jacob's well represents the physical body. How do you know that Jacob's well represents the physical body? Because the woman is there trying to draw water to quench her thirst. Jesus Christ is asking the woman, draw me water. But he has a greater meaning behind it. But for now, we're going to look at it literally, 
right? He said, give me something to drink, right? Now, I'm going to tie this to science. What does science talk about the human body? The human body consists of 80% of water. So our bodies consist of 80% of water. Without water, we cannot survive. You can survive without food for a couple of days. You can survive without certain things for a couple of days. But you can't survive without air. And you can't survive without water. So, air represents the spirit. Because remember, Jesus Christ blew his breath into Adam. And Adam became a living soul. So we know that the air represents spirit. Right? Because you can't see the air. Right? And it's the breath of life. Also, Jesus mentioned that he is the breath of life. Jesus Christ also mentioned he is the living water. You're going to see how this applies into the story. Right? The lady is trying to get water from the well. That is natural water. The water that Jesus Christ is trying to give the woman is supernatural water. How do you know? Let's keep reading. It says, The woman said it unto him, Sir, Thou has nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, for whence then has thou that living water? Right? So, in order to draw from the well, the water is all the way at the bottom. Right? So, she's saying, the well is deep, for whence thou has that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which givest the well and drink thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Let's stop right there. Right? That's verse 15, so we're going to go back to verse 16. Just remind me, all right? The woman is asking for this water now. She's curious because Jesus Christ said something that was very profound. Let's go back to verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. I just mentioned in the beginning of this video, the well of Jacob represents the physical body. Our bodies constantly need to replenish itself with water. You are 80% of water. Or 70%, 80%. I could be right or wrong. Right? Not trying to be politically correct. But most of your bodies consist of water. Right? So, your organs need to replenish itself. So, your organs and your body needs that water to hold itself. Right? And he's saying, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Let's look at our nature as human beings. We were born in sin. The flesh is, is sinful. It will always be needing, needing, needing. You could eat today. Let's say this, to right now is breakfast time. It's early in the morning, right? Where I'm at. I'm going to eat breakfast. And then a couple hours from now, I'm going to be hungry again. And that's lunchtime. And then a couple hours again, I'm going to be hungry again. You see what I'm saying? He can never be satisfied. So it doesn't matter how much things you do in this world. No matter how much times you try to please people. The truth is, you can never satisfy the flesh. That's why God tells you to crucify the flesh daily. He is the living water. See, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the living water. Is your flesh going to so thirst for water? Yes, because your flesh is not saved. Your flesh is still going to crave the things of this world. You're going to go back to the will of Jacob and keep going back to the well of Jacob. You're going to keep going back to the supermarket and buy more water and buy more water. But you're not recognizing the water that's already within you. The water that's already within you, brother and sister, is that living water, Jesus Christ. And when you accept Jesus Christ and you recognize Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you start to become less dependent on this world and more dependent on the living water, which is Jesus Christ. Look at what Jesus Christ is going to say to her in verse 16. Jesus said it unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. 
right? So he's telling her, go get your husband. How does the living water connect to husband and wife? Because he's saying, go get your husband, right? Verse 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou has well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, wow, right? And he in whom thou has it is not thy husband. And that you said truly. So this woman had five different men in her life, right? Now let's look at this. Let's let's bring this story back home. How many of you women, right? And this could apply to men too. How many of you guys have multiple partners? You does not have one partner. You had multiple people in your lifetime. And Jesus Christ is saying, in order for you to draw from this well, you need to go get your husband and come back here. The woman says, um, I have no husband. And he says, for you have had five husbands and he in whom you are, you are with now is not your husband. Then the woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou is a prophet. See, this is something that she only knows. She never told that guy, Jesus, hey, man, um, I got mad dudes I've been sleeping around with. You think God don't know your inner thoughts? You think God don't know what's going on in your life? But Jesus Christ is prophesying to this woman saying, hey, listen, you got to go back to your first love. When he's saying go back to your husband, he's saying go back to your first love. How do you know that Jesus Christ is referring to him. We are God's first love. That's why the Bible in the first commandment says, love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and all your soul. See, a lot of us messed up when we growing up. You know, we got introduced to pornography. We got introduced to sex very early. I could raise my hand. You understand? Some of us lost our virginities and um, junior high school, high school, whatever. Sometimes we lost it in the worst ways, right? And when you lose something so precious like that, it's very hard to get that back. It's gone, right? So God is like, if you want to get back your purity, you got to go back to him. Whatever the people robbed you of your innocence, brothers and sisters, if this message is applying to you, put a one in the chat because I'm about to go deep. I'm just getting, I'm just scratching the surface, right? If you are looking for a husband, sisters, if y'all looking for a husband, husbands, y'all looking for a wife, you're like, man, I'm tired of these women out here, man, they not wifey material, they out here being 304s, and I'm looking for a virtuous woman. Well, first off, brother, you cannot get that until you get your house in order. Sister, you cannot get a husband until you get your house in order. So when he's saying go back to your husband, he's talking about go back to your first love, Jesus Christ. See, Jesus Christ is the goo. He's the living water. Your relationships, your previous relationships, you got to look at this woman's story. This woman's story represents a lot of us. Because none of us is perfect. Let's be real. Right? So, look at this story as the woman represents you. You had all these different partners and none of them are the one. In order to have God bless your life, you have to make him first in your life. So he is the one. So you've been looking for the one all this time and not realizing that the one is within you. The living waters, Jesus Christ. So go back to your first love. You looking for all these husbands in the church, sisters. Y'all like, oh, you dressing up scandalous, going into these churches. Oh, I'm going to confront my husband. And God is like, listen, you're doing it backwards. You're going before the spirit. You're leaning on your own understanding instead of trusting in the most high God that he will provide for your needs. You will keep going to this well of Jacob. So let's look at the well of Jacob as you keep going back. To the same type of partners. You keep going back to the same type of sisters brothers. You like a certain type of sister. You like a sister with big booty. Hips. Everything. But every time you keep going for those type of sisters brother. You keep finding yourself in trouble. And you're asking like yo where are all the good women at? And God is like I hid them away from you. 
I hid them away from you because you're not ready to receive this living waters. What did he say to the woman? He said, if thou would, if thou knew it, the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink. Thou would have asked him and he would have given thee living water. So if you don't ask God and you don't go seek God, you'll never get it. Ladies, you've been looking for husbands in churches and you're just finding these same lame dudes all the time. And you know why you'll never find a man of God? Because you're not in alignment with the will of God. So go back to your first love. The answer is right here in the Bible. You didn't need a pastor to tell you this. You didn't even need me to tell you this, but I guess I need to tell you this because it's not ringing a bell for some of you. Y'all keep going back for the same type of dudes and y'all keep going through the same abusive relationships. And in order for you to get healed, you need the living waters. The physical water, you could, you could work out, you could eat good, you could sleep good, you could do all of that. But the Bible says bodily exercise profited little. That should answer some of you guys' questions. Y'all in the gym all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. I go to the gym too. I do the boxing. I do all of that. But bodily exercise profited little. Why is God saying that? Because no matter how much times you work out, you're never going to feel content at the level you're at. You're always going to feel incomplete. And the only reason you feel incomplete is because you're not complete without God. You've been looking for your quote-unquote soulmate, but your soulmate is Christ, not another person out there. The other person out there only complements what's in here. If you feel incomplete in here, you will always find incompletion out there. But if you're complete in here, this is what it means to be holy. You've been looking at holiness like, oh, holiness, I'm better than you. No, holiness is not that. Holiness means to be complete. Look at Jesus. Look at the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And people don't understand that. But then the Bible says God created man in his image and likeness. Male and female, he created them. If God created man in his image and likeness, don't we take on the same attributes as God in a much more smaller defined state? Let's explain this one more time. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you. You will say, me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I is one person. Me is not different from myself, and myself is not different from I. I'm the same person. So let's, let's, let's apply this analogy to God. God the Father ain't no different from the Son, and the Son ain't no different from the Holy Spirit. They're all one. So if that makes sense to you, put a one in the chat. I just, I just dropped a bombshell on y'all. Me, myself, and I are one person. Neil is the name of this person. I am Neil. Me, myself, is Neil. I am Neil. See what I'm saying? One. Jesus, God the Father. Jesus, God the Son. Jesus, the Holy Spirit. One. If you understand that concept, even a child can understand it. If you're still trying to come with this religious, oh, Jesus is not God, you missed it. I like what you said, um, Francis. Body, soul, and spirit. Body, 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 soul, and spirit. Sorry, right? So you're you're a threefold being. You you have a body. You have a soul, and you are a spirit. Right? You are a spirit that have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, a personality. That's your character, and you you possess a body. You're in a body. Okay. So, look at the same thing as God. God is a spirit. He has a soul. This is the son. And he, has, he had came on earth in a body. He had came on earth in a body. That's why it says, when you see me, you have seen the father. Oh, when he said, you see me, you have seen the father. But people were recognizing God. Only few people recognize when Jesus Christ said, who do they say that I am? What did Simon Peter said? You are the Christ. And he said, no man has revealed that to you but the Father. You feel what I'm saying? So for those who understand that concept, 
you have understand the mysteries of God. That's the mystery of God. The tree, the Trinity is the mystery of God. If you don't understand that, that means the Holy Spirit didn't reveal that to you. You know what I'm saying? If we represent the body of Christ, right? We represent the bride of Christ, right? When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he is your husband. You are the wife of Christ. You represent the bride as the church as a whole. I'm not talking about individual. I'm talking about the church as a whole. Anybody who's a believer, who is spirit felt with the Holy Spirit. That's why he says, me and my father will sup with them and we will become one. Marriage on earth supposed to represent something that's in heaven. The lamb and the bride. So the husband and the wife supposed to represent what Christ is to the church. The apostle Paul mystery. So when you're having sex, it represents the unification of the head and the body. The neck is the connection between the head and the body. Christ is the neck because he connects you to the father. So he said, if you ask me, you shall receive. So this is where the woman says, okay, I got to go get my husband. He said, you had five husbands and none of them are yours. Then she said, thou, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain or yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. So what he's saying, you don't know what you worship. Right? And um, he said, hold on a second. He said, you, know, you do not know what you worship. Ye, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh. And now is, and when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to, to worship him. Right? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Let's link marriage and God. Let me show you the parallels real quick. Men love sex, right? See where I'm going with this. Women, y'all try to withhold sex from men a lot of times. I'm not saying that y'all don't like sex, but what worship is to God is like what sex is to men. So when you worship other gods, it's like adultery to God. Make sense? Because it's intimacy. When you worship God, you come into prayer, you come into fellowship with God, you start worshiping God, praising God. That is like sex to God. Right? And it says, what he said right here, he said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. That's why when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he doesn't save your flesh. He saves your spirit. That's why you're able to bear witness with his spirit. It says the Holy Spirit bear witness with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit bearing witness with our spirit, meaning that unification. When a man has sex with a woman, that is that unification. That's why it says flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. When a man shall leave his father and mother shall cleave to his wife, they shall become one flesh. So the sex is the consecration of a marriage. Sex is what makes a man and a woman cleave to become one flesh. Do you understand? So, when you're having sex with all these different people, you're making one flesh with all these different individuals. A lot of people know this is soul ties, but I, 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 was, I did a video about soul ties, so that's not a biblical concept, but it is a, a realistic concept, but that is not... A biblical concept. I'll explain in another video another time. And I have done videos about that. That's a covenant. So the coming together of man and woman is a covenant. When you come together with God, that's a covenant. There's plenty of examples in the Bible where God showed covenants or making covenants. He made covenants with Noah, right? Made covenants with Abraham. He's made covenants with Moses. He's made covenants with David, right? 
So every time that he is made covenants with specific people in the Bible, that represent a different dispensation of grace. So going forward, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're making a covenant with God. That's why it says when you confess with your tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are saved because that is a covenant that you're making with your spirit, with his spirit. The baptism is symbolic of that covenant. So when you go through a water baptism, that is a covenant agreement. You see what I'm saying? This is what your salvation is. I know a lot of people want to disagree with this message. You're, you're free to disagree with whatever you want to. The truth will always be the truth. The Bible is the truth. I didn't say I'm the truth. Jesus is the truth. And if you have the living waters in you, it will resonate in your heart. For those that it doesn't resonate with, that means because they have, they have disregarded the living waters and went after the waters of Jacob. The waters of Jacob will always be never enough. Every time that you go after idols in this world, it will be never enough. If you go after your politicians and your celebrities and the people that you go to and watch at concerts, it would never fill you up. But this word will fill you up. How do you know this word will fill you up? He says, he said, I am the living bread of life. He's not only the living waters, but he's also the bread of life. He said, he is the manna that fell down from heaven. He said that the children of Israel were eating bread from heaven, but they still died in the wilderness. But I am the true bread of life that came down. So Jesus Christ coming down in the flesh is the true bread, the true manna, the true word. He says the word was with God and the word was God and the word is made flesh. How many times did Jesus Christ, without even having to say that he's God, told you that he's God? For you guys to sit here and read this and still say Jesus is not God, your, your blinders, your, you have skills in your eyes. And the skills in your eyes, I'm not talking about your physical eyes. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes. You are blind spiritually. Look what he said to the Pharisees. Right? He said, because you said you see it, your sin remain it. Because you don't see your darkness. You don't see yourself. You see what you want to see. You believe what you want to believe. And you're entitled because God respects free will. See, God is love. Right? And because God is love, he also has to honor your free will. God cannot control you. You got to control you. God gives you his Holy Spirit to give you the power of self-control. That's why one of the fruits of the Spirit, when you receive the Holy Spirit, is self-control. You're supposed to practice what you're preaching. It's not about being a hearer of the word. Because it says faith comes by what? Hearing the word. But he says also be doers of the word. We're going to go to James real quick. You know. Give me a second. I'm going to mute you bro. You can still watch. You can follow along but you mute it. Right. I'm not going to entertain that. Alright. So. Um, he said that God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the woman said unto him. I know that the Messiah cometh. Which is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. She still don't recognize him. He just told you about your life. He just told you something that you never told nobody. She's starting to open up our eyes, but she hasn't opened her eyes fully. Let's keep reading. He said, she said, he, he said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Right? Because she didn't believe him. Right? He said, I that speak unto you am he. And on upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seeketh thou or why thou talketh with her? The woman didn't left her water pot. Right? Look at that symbolically. The water pot. Right? And went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is this not the Christ? And then they went out of the city and came on to him. So this woman just received a revelation. 
She just received a revelation. She just received conviction. Because how? Think about it. She received conviction because God told her something that she never told nobody. When the word of God is speaking to you. When the word, when you hear the word of God and you, you hear somebody speaking the word of God and it's speaking to your heart. Are you listening? Are you answering the call? Or are you rejecting the call? That's just something to think about. She heard the call of the one that's calling her. Right? Our spiritual eyes were open. I agree. So the scales started to come off our eyes. Oh. We're waiting for the Messiah. We're waiting for him. He's going to tell us all things. He said, I am that person. Your, your, your interpretation of the Messiah is totally different from what you're facing right now. I am in front of you. You meeting me at the well is the crossroad. Where are you at in your life? Are you at a crossroad? Because if you're at a crossroad, then you're standing right there at the well of Jacob. And you're constantly with your water pot trying to fill up yourself because the water pot is symbolic of you. The, the, the water pot is you trying to fill yourself up with the things of this world and you can never be satisfied with the things of this world because it is fleeting. It is temporal. It is temporary. God is eternal. He is permanent. He said, my word will never change. The heavens or earth will pass away, but my word will remain the same. So, are you drinking from the living waters or are you still drinking from natural waters? See, a lot of people that's going to reject this message is those who still drinking from natural waters. Let's go even deeper with the revelation. The waters could represent doctrines. So, if you're constantly drinking from the natural waters, you're drinking from traditions of men. False doctrines and theories and conspiracy theories. There's no conspiracy theories in this Bible. The Bible's historical documents, the Bible's historical evidence for some of you guys to say, oh, the Bible's make-believe. These are make-believe characters. No, they are historical events and historical characters. Even science is starting to prove that the Bible is real. So there's your answer. And they've been knew that the Bible is real. Look at your satanic system. Now they're coming out and telling you guys that they love Satan. And try to get your kids involved with the Balenciaga incident. Wake up people. How much skills do you have in your eyes? Do you keep seeing evil and keep ignoring it? How much times you won't keep drinking from this, this well that's drying up? God said, I am the living waters. If you receive him, he will be like living waters inside of you. Going into everlasting life. So if you have the Holy Spirit... You have everlasting life dwelling inside of you. Your bowels is the deep part of the well. So he says, I'll be in your bowels springing up into everlasting life. See, look at the well. Look at the deepness of the well. He said, the well is deep. Who could draw from it? So let's look at this from a spiritual perspective. In order to draw from the wells of God, you got to come with your water pot empty. Let me say that one more time. In order for you to draw from the wells of God, you must come emptied. Your water pot shouldn't be filled with the things of this world. You should empty yourself out and come as you are. So that's when a lot of people tell you, oh, in the Bible, uh, in churches, come as you are. Jesus will accept you as you are. Well, how could he accept you if you don't empty yourself? You're coming with this pride. You're coming with this arrogance. You're coming with, oh, these lifestyles that are not incongruent with God's will. To come as you are is to recognize your sin. To come as you are is to recognize your need for Christ. To come as you are is to recognize your thirst for God. You could say, oh, he's supposed to accept me as I am. No, but you're not trying to. Accept them as he is. You're not trying to accept his word. You're not trying to take him at his word. You're trying to add to God what you think God should be. And that is not how this works. How do you know if you have the true Jesus Christ in your life? He, he's, not, he's not contradicted to his word. 
He tell you not to add to his word, nor take away from his word. He warned you guys in Revelation. He said, if you add to my word, I add to you these plagues of this book. If you take away from my word, I take away your name from the book of life. How do you know that your name is written in the book of life? Because you have the living waters inside of you. How do you receive the living word and in, in the living waters inside of you? Faith comes by what? Hearing the word. When you hear this word, are your, is your heart, which is the water pot, is it, is it empty enough to receive that word? Because a lot of you guys are coming on here with water pots that's already filled up with water. And not the living water, but natural water. The natural water representing your false belief systems, what you've been trained, what you've been experiencing in life. You got to leave that at the door. Whatever you think you know, you need to leave that at the door and empty yourself. That's why it says you must be like a child in order to enter into the enter into heaven, right? Now, let's see what it's like to be a child. Do you remember what it's like to be a child when you was growing up? You didn't have knowledge. You didn't know what it's like to be an adult. You didn't know what it's like to pay bills. You had a concept in your head. Of what it's like to pay bills. You had a concept in your head. To know what it's like to have sex. You had a concept in your head. To know what it's like to be an adult. So when you was a kid. You said I would grow up to be an astronaut. I'm going to grow up to be a doctor. I'm going to grow up to be a lawyer. And now 20 something years later. You're an adult. Are you, are you that astronaut? Are you that doctor? Are you that lawyer? Are you that drug dealer? On the block. Or you was that, or now you on the pole stripping for money. See, you don't even know your future, but you just, based on your interpretation of what you think things is without knowing what it is, you just say, hey, I'm going to be this when I grow up. I'm going to be that when I grow up. But as a child, we speak from a place of innocence. So God is saying, if I'm going to take you as you are, you got to come from a place of innocence. You gotta come from a place of innocence and purity. God will wash away all of your sins. The water that you will use to bathe with your skin cannot wash away your sins. The, the water that God uses on you, which is the water, which is the living word, he says, I wash you by the washing of the word. I present to myself a church spotless without wrinkle. So the water baptism is only symbolic of a baptism that's in the spirit. I'm going to say that one more time. A water baptism is only symbolic of a spiritual baptism that's happening in the spiritual through the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit washes you with the living waters, you are clean. You are pure. When he covers you in the blood of Jesus... The blood that Jesus sacrificed when he died on the cross. That's the only thing that will make you perfect. That's the only thing that will make you presentable before God. Spotless without blemish or wrinkle. Let's look at the blemishes and wrinkles. The blemishes and wrinkles are the sins and the errors that you have caused in your life. Your error of thinking. No natural water, no natural things can move those things. No man, no woman could do that for you neither. Only God can do that. So put a one in the chat if you understand this concept. And, and if you're agreeing with this. And this resonates with your spirit. Put a one in the chat. Because we're going to go to James real quick. As I go into James, I put a one in the chat. Because this is a revelation that God gave me. And I was supposed to share it yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to get around to it. So now I'm getting around to it because I had a long conversation with God. And this is, you see, when I fellowship with God, that's me drawn from the well of God. The true well of Jacob is in you. The Jacob, the well of Jacob out there is external. That's physical reality. Third dimension. Spiritual well of Jacob. God lives in me when I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I could draw from that well when I need my strength. That's why when Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. I don't think y'all caught that. When I am weak, I am thirsty. 
and I'm seeking for knowledge. I'm seeking for wisdom. I'm seeking for some type of comfort in this world. And I can't find that. I know where to go to. Go to his word. I'm going to pull up this Bible. I'm going to go to his word. And when I go to his word, I'm going to be able to draw from the scriptures what I need for my soul. I'm going to draw from the scriptures what I need for my spirit that's broken. Psalms 51 says, a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. So that the qualifications to receive God is a broken heart. If you feel that you're full of yourself, you cannot receive God because you're full of yourself. Doesn't it make sense? You can't receive what you, are, what, what you don't have room for. If there's no room for God in your heart, you cannot receive him. That's why you will ignore this message. That's why you will say, oh, you're a false prophet. Oh, that's not right. You try to give me political correct answers. Oh, his name is not Jesus, it's Yeshua. Who cares? Do you have room in your heart to receive this word? That's all I care about. I don't care about being politically correct. Do you have room in your heart, in your mind, to receive this doctrine of salvation? And if you don't, that's okay. Maybe it's not your time yet. I'm not going to shame you about it. You're entitled to believe whatever you want. But the truth will always be the truth. You can sit here and debate with me and say, oh man, that's... The, um, the stop sign is supposed to be green when it's originally red, and that's the fact. You could, you could debate about the color all day, but the facts is the facts. And you're upset because the facts don't relate with your belief system. The facts don't agree with your belief system. But God has to break that belief system in pieces so that you can receive Him. So that's why when you're going through persecution when you notice when people start to walk out your life you notice you start to lose your job you start to lose your mind you didn't lose your mind you about to get a new mind because God said you be transformed by the renewing of your mind so what God is doing he's breaking the old with the hammer of God he got the hammer he's cracking the pieces so that he can do something new See what I'm saying? And you're not allowing him to do that because you're still holding on to the old. You can't receive the new mm -hmm. if you're holding on to the old. Let go of the old in order to receive the new. Right? Let's look at James 1. So if you have your Bibles, go to James 1. Go to uh, verse 22. So we have verse 22, James 1. It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Right? It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Meaning you're looking at yourself in the mirror. Right? And he says, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. That's like me looking at myself in the mirror and forgetting how I look like. That's a lot of you guys that say, hey, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm born again. But you're forgetting that the life that you now live is in Christ and not in you. So when you forget about what type of man that you are, it's meaning you're forgetting that you are not this same person that you used to be. You keep going back to sin, not realizing that you have a new identity. Your identity is not in the old. It is dead and buried in Christ. That's what baptism represents. When you go get a baptism, it is symbolic of dying to the old you. Why you keep going back to the old places? Why you keep going back to these old things? Why you keep going back to these same old people that misuse you and abuse you? I could tell you why. Because you're like this guy in, this, in the scripture where he says, For he beholded himself, and go it his way, and straightway forget it what manner of man he was. To hold on to the image of God is to remember what God did for you on that cross. That you're not saved by your works, you are saved by his works. 
Your righteousness will never save you. It doesn't matter how holy and righteous you can be. It doesn't matter how much times you have a curse in a, in, in a music video or whatever you do, right? Oh, I don't fornicate today. I didn't do nothing. I ain't smoke today. I didn't say a curse word today. I'm holier than you. That would not get you into heaven. That's nice that you did it. But that is not getting you into heaven. Your salvation is not based on you. Your salvation is based on what Christ did for you. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, you shouldn't be seeing you. You should be seeing Christ. Woo! You shouldn't be seeing you. You're dead. You're a dead man. The life that you now live is in Christ. So when people see you, they shouldn't see you. I don't think you're hearing me. They shouldn't see you. They should see God in you. And if they're not seeing God in you, then you need to go and reevaluate yourself. You need to go back into that mirror, and which is the word. So the word is the mirror. This is the spiritual mirror which you see the reflection of Christ. Okay, what did I do wrong? Where did I went wrong? Let me see the perfect example. Because Christ, when he was on earth, was the perfect example of how we should live. He was the law of Moses manifested. That's why he is the ending of the law. He is the fulfillment of the law. And when we believe in him, we have the law of grace to fulfill that. You cannot... You cannot go back to the old because the Mosaic laws is the things of the old. Sacrificing goats and calves and wearing fringes. We walk in the spirit. It says God is a spirit. The true worshipers must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth. If you're not walking in the spirit and in the truth of who God is and who you are in Christ, you are living a lie. You are living based on the world standards. You are living in an antichrist system and you're adapting and practicing the devil's ways. That's why he says in the Bible to the people, he says, you do your will of your father, the devil. Because if you were children of Abraham, you would know who I am. But you say that I blaspheme. See him say, because it's not just a physical thing. It is a spiritual thing. When we walk in the spirit, we walk in the spirit. We, we, we perceive things from a spiritual perspective. When you judge the world, we don't judge the world based on its carnality. We judge the world based on the spirit of God. A lot of us are like to say, oh, we're not supposed to judge each other. We're supposed to love each other. No, you, you don't understand that concept. So let me break it down for you. We, as saints who are saved, by Christ who have the Holy Spirit you're commanded to judge one another with righteous judgment the Bible tells you that so you're wrong by saying oh we're not supposed to judge you yeah you're supposed to judge the church God judges the world we supposed to judge one another hold one another each each one of us in this church accountable if I'm in false doctrine you're supposed to correct me if you're in false doctrine, I'm supposed to correct you. Iron sharpens iron because we are the body of Christ. We're supposed to reflect Christ. If one member doesn't reflect Christ, then we all have to bear that person's burden. That's like your body. Think about it. If there's a cell in your body or a body part that is sick, and if you don't get it checked out, right, doesn't that affect and infect the rest of the body? Yes, it does. So the same thing applies to the body of Christ. If we're not correcting brothers and sisters in doctrine and we're not preaching this word with spirit and truth, then what are we are we are we feeding the flock or are we infecting the flock? Are we feeding the flock or are we infecting the flock? So it is very important that you hold yourself accountable. And if you're not at the level where you can hold yourself accountable, make sure you have elders and people who are in the body of Christ that will hold you accountable to certain things. This is about a walk of discipline. So when it says do not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word, meaning it's going to come to a point in your walk with God that you just can't go based on emotions. Oh, I didn't feel the Holy Spirit today, so I'm not saved. God does not move based on emotions. God moves based on his word. God moves based on faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. 
You can have a feeling of unbelief. That doesn't change the fact of the reality that is. When you move on faith, it's saying, like, okay, doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what's the opposition. I'm going to still do what my Lord and Savior told me to do. That's what it means to act on faith. It has nothing to do with how you feel or how I feel or anybody else feels. You must do it regardless of how you feel. That is discipline. So the fruits of the Spirit is based on your discipline. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, He gives you a spirit of control to control this flesh. Because you can't control this flesh. You was a slave to sin. When you were a slave to sin, when you were in sin, you didn't have no self-control. I don't care how much times you went to the gym. I don't care how much um, ohms and, and mantras you sold to yourself and been religious. You are still a slave to your nature. You're a sinner. You were born in sin. So, you are now saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. That makes you saved in the sight of God. So, when God sees you, he doesn't see you. He sees his son. When you're covered in the blood of Jesus as a sinner that's now saved, when you're standing in front of God, right? God doesn't see your past mistakes. God doesn't see your, your errors. He sees his son on you. Remember the book of Exodus when the children of Israel had to cover their doors with the blood of the lamb so that the angel of death would pass? And if they and anybody didn't cover the blood, they covered their door with the blood of the lamb. They would kill their firstborn. Well, let's look at it from a spiritual sense. Anybody who is not covered in the blood of Jesus, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they will be attacked by the angel of death. Or better yet, they belong to the world, so they belong to the angel of death, who is Satan. Because the God of this world, who is Satan... Blinds the minds of the unbelievers. So unbelievers, you're not covered. I'm not saying I'm different than you as far as being a sinner because I still struggle with sin and I still battle with sin just like anybody else who battles with sin and struggles with sin. The only difference between me and you, brother or sister, is that I'm covered in the blood. So when I stand in front of God, he hears my prayers. When I stand in front of God, he doesn't see Neil. He sees his son, Jesus. When I'm standing in that courtroom in front of God, I have an advocate to defend me. When you're standing in court in front of God and you don't have an advocate, you have an adversary that's accusing you to God. Who is the accuser of the brethren? The devil. The devil is accusing, hey man, this person, that, hey, that person's living in sin. That person's in fornication. That person is doing that. He belongs to me now. But when you give your life to Christ, yeah, the devil's going to still accuse you because he did that to Job. Read the story of Job. But guess what? Because you have an advocate to protect you, you have an advocate to defend you. The blood of Jesus Christ is that advocate to protect you and, 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 and keep you from harm. Even if the devil go out there and tell, you, tell God, hey man, this person's doing this, this person's doing that. When God looks at you, he sees the blood of Jesus on you. Right? And he knows that you're still one of his. He belongs to me. She belongs to me. You can't touch them. That's what this is. This is the, this answers the parable about the wheats and the tears. The tears are the people in this world who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They belong to the devil. The tears. The wheats are the children of God. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ. As their personal Lord and Savior. Those who are covered in the blood and blood of Jesus Christ. But here's the, here's the interesting thing about the parable. Of the sower in the field. And the wheats and the tears. It says that the wheats and the tears look identical. Let them grow. And when the time is, is appointed for the reapers to come down. Which are the angels. They're going to separate the wheats from the tears. What is this symbolic of? The falling away of the church. There's many people that's in church that say that they're Christians, but they're really not. 
but they might look identical. They might act like a Christian. They may talk like a Christian, but in their hearts or hearts, they're not for God. They can say Jesus, Lord, and all of that, but their hearts are not with God. They're far away. So God is a discerner of all things, and God is a discerner of hearts. God knows who is his and who is not. Let's go to Romans real quick. So I could drop that on you. Right? Let's go to verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Let me see that one more time. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. This is Romans 8 verse 9. Just for you guys who think that I'm brainwashed. Read Romans 8 verse 9. I don't need to debate with you. The truth is right here in the pudding. The word of God. I didn't write it. I didn't write it. I'm just preaching what my father told me to preach. See what I'm saying? Just doing what my father told me to do. God bless you. Feel what I'm saying? God bless you. You know? But anyway, he says, he's talking to who? What is, what is verse 9 talking to? Verse 9 is talking to believers. You are not in the flesh. How you're not in the flesh? Because you have the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to be operating from the spirit, not in the flesh. Right? Let's keep going. If so be that the, the um, spirit of God dwelling in you. Why would he say if? Because a lot of you guys may think you have the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible tells you to examine your heart. Examine your heart daily. Right? So... If so, be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. So, yes, as believers, Christ lives in us. Our body is dead because of sin. So, why are you going back to dead things? Why are you keep going back to dead relationships that you know ain't working? God told you many, many a times, leave that boy alone. Leave that girl alone. Leave that man alone. Leave that woman alone. Leave your friends alone. Leave those things alone. But you don't listen. Right? Because you keep going back to dead things. So examine your heart every time that you're feeling tempted to go back to sin. Because going back to sin is basically going back to bondage. That is symbolic of Egypt. What was Egypt symbolic of in the Bible? The captivity of the Israelites. So every time you go back to your sin or your sinful lifestyles or your sinful way of thinking, you're going back to bondage, right? And every time that you repent and you confess your sins to God, that is God getting you out of bondage because it says for who the sun sets free is free indeed. So when you repent and you confess your sins to God, God will hear your hear your hear your cries and he will hear your pleas he will hear your prayers and he will send his son to save you. He is the Messiah. He is the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? Look at this. He says, "And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness." So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have life in you. Respect the life that's in you. You can't live how you want to live. How do you know that God is in you? He's showing you every single day how he's playing a role in your life. Are you spiritually awoke to see that? Because God could be doing miracles in front of you every single day. But you guys are looking for specific signs. You're looking for specific miracles. God is not a circus clown. And God will not be mocked. God is working in your life. Can you see him working in your life? Can you see the evidence of your salvation? Put a one in the chat if you guys are safe and you're seeing the evidence of God working in your life. Put a one in the chat and I'm talking to believers. I'm not talking to unbelievers. 
Because if you're not seeing the workings of God in your physical reality, in your physical life, the tangible reality, then you don't understand the move of the Spirit. No, you cannot see a spirit, but you can feel his presence. The only way you can see spirits is when he opens your spiritual eyes. When he opens your eyes to spiritual things, that's when you start to see into the spirit. So how do you have the ability to see into the spirit? First, you must have the spirit of God. Because let me explain the difference between witches and people who practice occult practices. Because I used to do that back in the days before I got saved. The difference between somebody who is practicing spirituality versus someone who has the spirit of God. They don't got to practice spirituality. They are spiritual because they have the spirit of God that's in them. See, when you are religious and you out there trying to practice other religions and worshiping other gods, you put on a sense of godliness, but you're denying the power thereof. How are you denying the power thereof? You're denying the power of God's existence. You're denying the power of his glory. You're denying him of his praise. When you worship other gods, you're denying God of his glory and his praise. That's blasphemous. You're attributing God's miracles in your life to another God. The things that God does in your life, you are who are you attributing God's praise to? Oh, I don't believe in God. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's real. I believe more in what man is saying. Well, you've been deceived. Your your spiritual eyes are blind. You're like Ray Charles in the spirit realm. You physically see what's going on, but you are spiritually blind. Wake up. When I say you're spiritually blind, I mean your understanding of things spiritual is darkened. You're ignorant. So what is what does the word ignorant mean? The word ignorant means not to have knowledge of. That's what it is. You're not aware of the spiritual world around you. The Bible in the book of Ephesians says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. What is flesh and blood? The physical reality. We, what you're seeing right here on this video is flesh and blood. But the voice behind me is the spirit. Are you able to discern the spirit that I am in? Am I operating in the spirit of God? Am I operating in my flesh? Am I operating in what? You see what I'm saying? Now, nah, let them keep talking because, hey, God don't like ugly. I, I, I say to anybody on here that disagrees with this message, you still have time to repent. You still have time to turn, the life, turn, turn your life to Christ. I'm not the answer. I know who has the answer, though, Jesus Christ. And if you accept him in your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, you will understand where I'm coming from. I'm not here to convince you of my truth. I'm convicted of my truth. The reason why I'm preaching this is because I'm convicted of Christ. I seen Christ. I know Christ. I have intimate dealings with Christ. I let my work speak for itself. When you go to my website www.footworkministries.com, you have all the answers that you're looking for. And don't worry about me being a charlatan cuz I don't want your money. The books are free to download. Have fun. Enjoy. If you can't find the website, go to my TikTok link. When you go on my page on my TikTok, you'll see it in the bio description below. www.footworkministries.com I've written nine books for the Lord based on my revelations and visions and near-death experience. When I had COVID-19, I let the work speak for itself. Right? And if you still don't want to believe, that's because you choose to be blind. You said, and, and this is what Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees. He said, because you said you see... Your sin remaining with you. I'm speaking to those who want to believe. I'm speaking to those who want Christ. I'm speaking to those who are trying to do everything in this world. And they're just tired. And they're looking for truth. And I'm going to point them in the right direction. If you want to go in the wrong direction by any means. Knock yourself silly. Right? So. It says. In verse 11, it says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So Jesus Christ rose from the grave. 
So that same spirit that made Jesus Christ rose from his grave is the same spirit that dwell in each and every single one of us who accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So, yes, my near-death experience, and because I had Jesus Christ in my life, I was able to overcome that experience and able to talk to you today because if I was dead, I couldn't talk to you today, would I? And my near-death experience is could be read in my in my books on my website at www.footworkministries.com. The first two books that you see, the book of Levin and the second Proverbs of Levin, right? Where I've given revelations on the things that God has shown me when I was out of my body. I've had a lot of experiences with heaven and hell. Enough that God wanted me to write it in a book to spread the gospel, to spread the truth, and to give my testimony of my walk with God. If it convicts you and it, and it opens your heart to want to seek God with all your heart, then I've done my job. If it didn't do that for you, then I still did my job. I'm not here to impress you. You're entitled to whatever you want to believe. I said, let the fruit speak for itself. I, I could write a million books. I could write a thousand books. I could do all this preaching and teaching, but I didn't save myself. That's the funny thing. A lot of people are doing works to try to impress God. This is not to impress God. I do it because I love God. And I know what I know what he did for me. I know the I know the darkness that he took me from. I used to be in the occult. Right? Add me on my on my TikTok and you'll see the link. You'll see the link. It says www.footworkministries.com. I was in the occult. I used to deal with Satanism. I used to do witchcraft. I used to pour libations to ancestors for some of you guys that know what I'm talking about. None of that is godly. None of that will get you into heaven. None of that is, is, is cool to begin with. But in my ignorance, I did those things. Because like some of you guys are watching this video right now. I went through church hurt. I used to hate Christians to be straight up real with you. So I could, I'm not getting at you guys that's getting at me. Because I was once in your shoes. That's the funny thing. I was once in some of you guys' shoes that are coming against this message like, Oh, God ain't real and you're speaking heresies and you're not speaking real. I was once in your shoes saying the same thing to other brothers and sisters who were Christian until God arrested me in the spirit and said, Hey, just like he did with Paul. Why do you persecute me? And from that day, the thing that I once hated, I now love. Ain't that an irony? The same people I was persecuting, I become one of them. That's how God works. That's how I know that God is real. Because I had no intentions of being a Christian. Just to be real transparent with you. I had no intentions of walking this walk. So who's really in charge? Me or God? So when God puts a calling on your life, you can't ignore the call. He says, many are called, few are chosen. You could be called, but you may not be chosen. And some people think that God is calling them when God is really not calling them. See, I could tell you that I was really called because I had no intentions of doing this. I was like Jonah, run away from God. And in my, in my limited understanding, <laughs> I thought that I could outrun God. Like, now nah, I would do my own thing. I'm my own God. I could do whatever I want. No, you can't. All of us have to hold an account to God one day. When you leave this vessel, this flesh body, you will be a spirit standing in front of God. And then you will know your father. You feel what I'm saying? You said, did your near-death experience cause you to become a Christian? Absolutely. Absolutely. I had a near-death experience with COVID, but that's when I was already a Christian. My first near-death experience was when I was 20 years old. When I was overdosing on drugs. I had somebody sell me some weed with some LSD, which is angel dust. And I was tripping out. And my family didn't know what to do with me at that time. So they constantly kept me going in and out the hospital. And at that time, I was having a lot of out-of-body experiences and stuff like that. And yes, God did speak to me. That was around the time when I got baptized because I knew in my spirit and God put it in my spirit. It's like, Neil, if you keep living this way, you're going to die. 
That was the feeling that I got. And I gave my life to the Lord. I got baptized in Queens, Fall Rockaway, Queens, and Fall Rockaway Beach. I'll never forget that. So, you say, what do you see on the other side? You see the real world. You think that this world is real? I'm not saying it's not real. It's just part of the real world. When you go to sleep at night, right? When you're having visions, if you, some of you guys could remember your visions, if not, some of you guys may not. When you are dreaming, that is the real world. Because the real you is spirit. You are in a body which is flesh and blood. But when you're in the spirit world, you're interacting with spiritual beings. So when you see people in your dreams like family members and people, some of these people that are looking like your family members are not your family members. They are familiar spirits disguised as your family members. And when the Bible says that Satan can masquerade as an angel of light, that is true. A lot of these devils be coming to you guys in your dreams like your exes and your, and your family members. But then you start questioning the dream. Because this is another level in it. Lucid dreaming. Which the conscious community would say. I would say allowing the Holy Spirit to open your spiritual eyes. Allowing the Holy Spirit to activate your knowledge and understanding. See the, the conscious community occult would call it lucid dreaming. And they think they could control their dreams. But you see, with the thing about the conscious community, and I want to say this to anybody who's in that community, I'm, I hope that you're listening. You're being deceived because the reason why you could control your dreams or be lucid in your dreams and you're not with the Holy Spirit is a dangerous thing. Know why? Because the spirit that's operating behind you is demons. Demons give you, the, give you that illusion that you could control them when in fact you are enslaved to them. Think about, you say, oh, I got control over my addiction. I could quit smoking any day. All right, so I quit, quit smoking today. See how hard it is. Because when I was in the conscious community, I used to smoke weed. And I was addicted to weed. Where I had to go into drug rehabs. I had to go into drug programs. And none of those things could have helped me. Because I had, an, I had a stronghold. So if you guys know what a demonic stronghold is, is when a demon has legal rights over you. And the only way you could be free from those things is when you turn your life to Jesus Christ. And sometimes even if you turn your life to Jesus Christ, you still have to go through the warfare because the devils are not going to just give up that easy. They're not going to like, yo, you was with us the whole time. You're not, not giving your life to Christ. We're going to fight to and nail. So when you turn your life to Christ... A lot of my spiritual experiences is because of the warfare I've had. So I'm just sharing you, I'm just sharing with you, brothers and sisters, the things I've experienced. If you could resonate with it, put a one in the chat. If you don't resonate with it, put a two in the chat. But I'm just here to speak what I've, I've, I've experienced. Sorry, so don't twist this. I'm just here to give you the light that God has given me based on my darkness. Because I'm pretty sure some of you guys could re resonate with what I'm talking about. Sleep paralysis, when demons are harassing you in your sleep, when spirits are trying to have sex with you in your dreams. I've experienced it all. So I know, without a shadow of a doubt, I know that this is real. And I could tell you, I could tell you that way out. When you're having sleep paralysis and these spirits are trying to have sex with you in a dream, you know what name worked for me? Jesus. Because when I was in the conscious community and I was practicing witchcraft and I was having these spirit spouses having sex with me in the dreams and all that. And I couldn't speak out of my mouth. I just said the name Jesus in my head. And then I was able to speak out of my mouth and I said Jesus. And I witnessed this spirit jump off of me the minute I said the word Jesus. And from that day, that was that, was, that stir of desire in me. I was like, I did the witchcraft. I did the black magic. I did all of that. I'm not saying that stuff don't have power to it, but I never experienced a power like this. Holiness. I never experienced something like that. Something so pure. I never experienced something like that. Is the Bible real? Like that started coming into my head at the age of 20. Like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I need to read this book. And yes, I still struggle with sin. Yes, I still struggle with those things, but gradually God delivered me from those things. So from the age of 20 to 25, yeah, I was still out there partying, doing what I wanted to do. 
But I have protection. It's not advocating that you live in sin. I'm just telling you my story. God's protecting me. I went to I went to psychic readers, people who did readings on me, and you know what they couldn't do? I'll tell you a story right now. One lady that taught me how to do qigong and yoga. She was one of my holistic doctors at the time. This was around the age of 22, 23 to 25. I was constantly paying this lady to get me better and all that stuff. And for some reason, she was she was talking about Jesus at the same time like how are you mixing God with the devils because a lot of these people be thinking like they can mix God God's word with the with the profane so she was supposed to take me to a temple one day right to to talk to those false gods she's like oh, I'm gonna bring you to the temple to get the readings you one of the chosen ones and all that stuff but let me show you how God protects his chosen ones even in the in their rebellion, even in their disobedience, even in their ignorance. When you're chosen from God, nobody can touch you. And I'm telling you my story. So the lady took me to the temple, which was in Crown Heights, right? That's the Jewish neighborhood over there. They got a church. So we went up in there one time and they were having a church service. And I say, man, this is a church. Why are you? Isn't she like, this is where the temple's at. I was like, this is a church though. I thought you was taking me to see those Egyptian gods and stuff. Man, we ended up having church service. I was confused because I was like, yo, I thought you was taking me to see the 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 priest and all these people. I didn't get that revelation till years later when God dropped it on me. Like, listen, Neil, that woman could not break the agreement that I have over your life. You know why she couldn't take you to that temple that day? I said, why, God? Because I'm in control. And if she had did anything contrary to my agreement with you, it would have been problems for that lady. And she knew it. So witches know who's chosen by God. She could not play that with me. So I'm just sharing that to some of you guys who are into that type of lifestyle and you thinking that God can't save you from that lifestyle. I'm telling you. When I turned my life to Christ at 20, I was still rebelling against the church. I still had issues with God. That didn't work out all the way, right away. But the simple fact that God put it in my spirit to get saved that day, I was one of his. And the devils were mad. So that's why they were trying to take me out through the drugs. That's why they were trying to take me out through the medications. Because they knew of the goal and they knew of the, the calling that God had on my life. I never went to seminary school. I never went to a pastor and say, hey man, teach me that, teach me. I didn't want to be around Christians. So for the simple fact that I never wanted to be in church, even though my moms and dad was trying to force me to go to church and I was acting up, I got my butt whipped because I was asking certain questions in church. God chose me when I didn't even choose him. And for simple fact that he chose me and I was still rebelling, he still had his hand over me. God be the glory. So I'm going to skip forward to age of 25, 26. So at the age of 26 is when I moved out of my pop's house. And I knew that God was shifting me to go to another place. And at this time, I was in a relationship with a woman with three kids. I know it sounds crazy, but that's how crazy the, that, that, that satanic world will have you. Always looking for love. Always looking for love in the wrong places. And I remember the lady who sold me the house because at the time... Me and my ex weren't at good terms at the time. And it happened around Thanksgiving because I was supposed to spend time with her on Thanksgiving and it never happened. I was like, I'm supposed to meet your other kids. If you're going to be moving together, I got to meet your other kids. But God had other plans for me. So in my head, I was like, I'm going to spend my life with this woman that have kids by another guy. That's how low I was willing to go. Just to find love. But God is like, no, you need to go back to your first love. You need to go back to your first love. So what I did, okay, going forward, the lady sells me the house. She's like, I could have got you the three bedroom meal. But you know why I, you know I, I didn't get you the three bedroom? I got you the, I got you a one bedroom. Right? This is the house that I'm living in right now. And she just came out of the blue and just tell me, like, I don't think you should marry that woman. I'm like, excuse me? I was like, I was, I was upset. 
but didn't know that God was speaking through that woman. Warning me that if I was to do that, I wouldn't be here teaching you guys today. I would have probably been in some way worse situation. That woman was a distraction from my calling. Yes, I do forgive her, but I understand that she did play a major role in my development. And when it was time for her to leave my life, there was nothing I could have did about that because God is in control. So when I got my house December 1st of 2016, so this is seven years now. Look at that number seven. That's symbolic of God, right? There you go. So December 1st, got my spot. I didn't even let I didn't even let my dad know. I didn't let nobody know that I was getting this house till I got the money to buy it. And when I bought it, I told my dad, I was like, I'm moving out next week. I got the keys. I already packed my stuff. I moved on faith. I moved on faith. I gradually started doing things that God was telling me to do. Oh, pack your bags. Go do this. Even though I know I wasn't moving nowhere yet, it was preparing me for the shift. So when God is ready to make you move or he's going to do something in your life, he's going to prepare you for the shift. So all the incomfortabilities that you guys are having in your life, he's preparing you for the shift. You must be obedient to his voice. And because I was obedient to his voice, that lady left my life that a month after I got this house. So the first year of next year, which was, uh, that was 2017, January 1st, we broke up on the 1st of January. I got my house on December 1st. We broke up on January 1st. God be the glory. That's God. Yeah, I was heartbroken. Yeah, I was messed up behind it. Yeah, I started having mad friends with benefits and just going back to my old ways. But God was gradually shifting me out. Then I started doing my YouTube ministry in 2017. I was still thinking like the occult, but I was gradually shifting out of that mode of, yeah, self-help and self-motivation, all of that. Because when you look at my videos on my YouTube I used to curse in my videos. I never took them down because I want you guys to see that there's no perfect Christian out here. I know a lot of you guys looking at people as Christians like we're not supposed to have a human existence or we're not supposed to have a human moment. No, I show all of my human moments. I said the F word, the B word, all that. And I, I'm also showing you that God can deliver you from that. So my, my videos are my testimonials. My videos are my receipts of how good God has been to me. And I won't take it down to try to pretend to be a Christian. I'm not trying to pretend to be a Christian. I am really trying to live that lifestyle the best way that I know that I can. And yes, I know I have a long way to go, but that's okay because I know who's guiding me. I'm not going to dating coaches for advice. I'm going to God for advice. I'm not going to therapists for advice. I'm going to God for advice. You feel what I'm saying? I hope I've been a motivation to you guys. I hope that my stories, my testimonials has been an inspiration to you brothers and sisters. I hope that it sparked the flame in you that, listen, I don't care what darkness you're in. I don't care what the devil told you he said he's going to do to you. You cannot touch God's anointed. You cannot, you know, there's people, I, I, I spent thousands of dollars on occult items. I spent thousands of dollars on spiritual books, which I had to throw out all for the glory of God. No, I had sex with witches, people that try to do all kind of witchcraft on me and it backfired. You cannot touch God's anointed. Oh, I'm the one, I'm supposed to be the one. No, you're not. Because the one for me is who God brings in my life. I know my Lord and Savior. See what I'm saying? So my books that I've written on my about my testimony is all about the prophecies that God has revealed in my life and the things that he's revealed to me through revelations and visions. So www.footworkministries.com. Add me on TikTok as a friend. If you have not done so, you'll see the, the website in the bio description. Also add me on YouTube anytime that I do videos i usually put the replays on the youtube so if you guys are just coming in and you want to re-watch this video i will upload it to the youtube the youtube link is also in the tiktok link too
right? I know that some of you guys probably don't believe in God. I used to be there too. Preaching the gospel to you. Some of you guys might not be reached by me trying to read the Bible. I know that. But in this, I can tell you this though. I reach a lot of you more by just being transparent with you. Because a lot of you want to hear this type of talk. And I'm not ashamed to tell you about my story because I'm not there anymore. I'm not ashamed to tell you about my past because I'm, I'm not living in my past. I'm living right now. And I don't need to worry about my future because God's in control of that. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, he's washed away my sins, past, present, and future. I'm not trying to be perfect because I know there's somebody that's perfect inside of me that's perfecting me every single day that I get up. The religious spirit will tell you guys, hey, I got I to gotta be perfect. I got to be this. I got to do this right. I didn't do this right. The most important thing you need to do is keep your relationship with God intact. And anything and anybody that gets in the way of that. I had to cut off friends. You know those people I cut out of my life? You know those women I cut out of my life? I cut out friends, family members. Anybody can get it. My passion for God comes from my experience with God. My passion for God comes from my revelations with God. My, passions, my passion for God comes from every single thing I've experienced. My battle experience. Doing deliverance on people. Doing deliverance on myself. All of that came through trial and error. Nobody's perfect. If you're going in there with this perfect mindset, you're going to be slaughtered. The devil knows the Bible. Don't get it twisted. That's why it's so imperative that you know the Bible. It's very imperative that you stay in the word and fellowship with God. I am not transforming myself. God is transforming me. I'm saying that one more time. I'm not transforming myself. There's no word, there's no amount of goodness that I could do. That I could gain an interest into heaven. It's only through Jesus Christ. You said I was casting spells with people. When I was in the occult, I was. When I was in the occult, I used to do that. And I had to repent for that. And even in my ignorance, God still protect me from all of that. Because he makes sure that I didn't go that dark. That's another thing too. When you're called by God, God will not let you do certain things. Like I'll give you an example. I never went to a concert. And I understand why I never went to concerts. Because that's a big place for Satan worship. A lot of you brothers and sisters who ever went to concerts and seen celebrities and all that. Satanic. God always kept me away from those type of places. I ain't saying my life is squeaky clean because I just told you my past. And no, you cannot use, your, you cannot use my past against me because I'm not there anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you could come and say, oh, you used to do that. You used to be an evil person. Listen, I used to be that. I am what I am. I am who I am in Christ. Feel what I'm saying? I didn't come here with a squeaky clean past because nobody in here has a squeaky clean past to begin with. Anybody saying that they good, they relying on their goodness. They're not trusting in God. I came in and told you what I am. I'm not perfect. And as long as I have a flesh and body suit that still has sin in it, I could never be perfect. When God comes back for his chosen, and, he, and we get that new body, then we can talk a different tune. But my job is more important than worrying about what people think about me. My job is preaching the gospel. My, my job is to preach the gospel to those who are lost. I, I, understand the, I understand the consequences of preaching the gospel. I understand that people are going to hate on me. I understand that I'm going to be persecuted. I understand that people are going to attack me. I might lose my life behind it, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I've come to terms with that. And every day, yeah, the fear might come in my heart like, yeah, they're going to kill you for this. Hey, man, they can't take me out unless God tell them to take me out. And if God tell them to take me out, then it's my time to go. And I'm not worried because I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I know who my father is. So I, I, I die enjoying peace. My flesh might be scared, but my spirit, I got peace. My question to you, do you have peace? Because you can't rattle what you, you didn't put in me. You can't take from me what you never gave me. 
The world never give you peace, so they're going to try to rob your peace. But they can't take what they never gave you. That's why they angry. That's why they mad. Oh, you, you're a false prophet. You this. You could bring up all of my past. My joy is not based on my past. I used to have sex with so many different women thinking that would bring me peace. That don't bring me peace. That brings me chaos. God just need to give me one woman, which I already have. Feel what I'm saying? And I'm cool with that. God has provided me the right person. God has provided me the right circumstances. God has provided me all those things. Why? Because he's God. He knows what I need more than what anybody else think that I need. I don't got to parade my wife. I don't have to parade my life to prove anything to none of you guys. I've done enough. And I will keep doing what God tells me to do. So my thing to you, brothers and sisters, before I leave this video... Do what you're supposed to do. You know what you're supposed to do. You know that you got God knocking on the door of your heart. Are you letting him in? Are you letting the rest of the world in? Is your water pot full of the things of this world? Or is your water pot filled with the living water which is Christ? I'm just here to speak the truth. And nothing but the truth. That's it. I'm not here to speak about my glory because I have no glory. I'm here to speak about God's glory because his glory is greater than mine's. His righteousness, he's imputed onto me because I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. Did you do that? Or are you still relying on your works and saying, I'm going to get into heaven because I follow all the laws of Moses. Oh man, I kept all the Ten Commandments, so I'm going into heaven. If you, if you feel in any one of those commandments, you feel in them all. I'm going to give you a scripture before I end this video. Romans 8, chapter 1, verse 1, my bet. says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Listen to that one more time. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So if you're walking after the Spirit... Regardless of the devil trying to accuse you about your past, you remind him there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. Why are you accusing me for something I'm already dead to? You talking to a dead man. Oh, but you remember you used to go there? Remember you used to smoke weed, Neil? Remember? Like, that Neil's dead. I don't know that guy anymore. Who are you talking about? The life that I now live is in Christ. What are you talking about? Remember those women you used to bring over to your house, Neil? I don't remember that. I don't recall. It says, the Bible says, love keep no record of wrongdoing. <laughs> love don't keep no record of wrongdoing. What are you talking about? Don't try to act like you don't know. Hey, man. God forgiving me. I'm good. Feel what I'm saying? Like, let's go to verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Devil. The law of the spirit has made me free from the law of sin. I don't live for myself no more. I live for Christ. So I don't know that guy you talking about that used to mess around with those women. I don't know that guy you used to talk about that used to smoke weed and, and wild out. I don't know him anymore. He's dead to me. He might try to rise up from time to time like the undead, like the zombies. So he's talking about I want to live. But I'm going to put him back down every time he rises up. Every time this zombie version of myself keep coming back up, the old version of him, I'm going to slay him with the sword of the spirit. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, to do the same. Every time that dead part of you, which is dead in trespasses, dead in sin, rise up to try to tempt you, slay it. You have the power too. Stop telling yourself you're powerless. You don't. You have the power. What did God say? I said, he said, I've given you the power and authority to tread upon all serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. Do you believe? Put a one in the chat. He's giving you the power and authority 
to tread upon all serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. If you truly believe, you, you truly believe that and you truly receive that, when you have to face that enemy every night when you go to sleep and you have sleep paralysis, you need to remind the devil of his future doom. He want to remind you of your past? Well, you remind the devil, hey, there's a lake of fire with your name on it. And it is written. And the Lord casted this devil and his angels into the lake of fire. I seen Satan fell down like lightning. There you go. You want to have comebacks? Remember when you was young, you used to be in school and you used to crack jokes on each other and somebody tried to cut you behind, you used to cut them back? Well, you got to do that with them devils. They trying to cut you with your past, you got to cut them with the sword. Become a warrior. If you're not a warrior, become a warrior. And trust and believe, when you get enough spiritual warfare happening in your life, it's going to make you a warrior. I used to be scared as devils. I used to be scared of all the sleep paralysis. I was once there too. But until one day, I just got tired. You're not going to harass me in my sleep. You're not going to you're not gonna have sex with me without my consent in my sleep. You're not doing this anymore. So that's when I started to tap into the power of God that was already within me, ready to be tapped in because he is the living waters. He's ready to be drawn out with the water pot. Sometimes God will put you in a situation where you have nothing else to do but draw on his strength. And that strength is coming from deep within your bowels. So when you're experiencing this sleep paralysis and you're experiencing these attacks, you must draw on the power. When you feel not strength, you must draw on the strength of Christ. Don't let these devils intimidate you. Don't let these people in the world tell you what you can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. You said, I have a question, sir. If somebody asks, let me say that again. I have a question, sir. If someone asks God to forgive them, isn't it wrong to cross God? You got to kind of give me a better example of that. Someone, if, if, if somebody asks God to forgive them, right? If, I, if somebody's asking God to forgive them, but they didn't forgive others, God's not going to forgive you unless you forgive your brothers and sisters who trespass against you. This is written in the word. So that's my answer to that. You feel what I'm saying? You have to forgive others. If God is forgiving you for your sins, it, it, he's telling you to do what he did to you. If he's forgiving you, then you should be forgiving others. I have videos on my page, brother. You can check it out as well. I had a video... I had a video of a vision that I had having to do with unforgiveness. Got to go through the archives. I have a lot of videos, but you'll find that video. It's called The Power of Forgiveness. Just to make you guys aware, when you go on the TikTok page, you'll find a video called The Power of Forgiveness where I talk about my vision where I had to forgive somebody in the dream because they were I was holding on to unforgiveness. And that's also taught me how to have forgiveness towards myself. And to others who have done me wrong. I know it's not easy. Our flesh is, is stubborn. Our flesh, we don't want to forgive. We like to hold on to revenge. We like to hold grudges. But you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God. Holding on to those things. Right? You said. Um, as a female who also teaches and ministers. It is refreshing to hear our males teach and reach on to God. Amen. I hope, I hope there is more men out there that's going to preach like this too. I really do. I, I, I thank God for using me in the way that he's using me. I thank you guys for being wonderful people to receive this message. And I, I, I got, if I love God, I got to love his people. I can't say I love God and hate his people. Now, I may be at times now I may feel annoyed to come on here and, and preach the word, but I got to do the Lord's will. That's it. So let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, I come before you right now as your humble servant, Neil. I thank you, God, for allowing me to preach your gospel, to preach your word, to speak the good message to those who need this good message. Thank you, Father God, for using me as your end-time warrior, your end-time vessel to empower those who need to be empowered. Thank you, Father God, for 
empowering my brothers and sisters with this word today, Father God. And I pray that they be empowered to empower others, Father God. I pray that you will cover them in your blood from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, Father God. And that you will remove every doubt and every unbelief that's in their hearts right now. Every fear, Father God, for it is written in your word, you said there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And Father God, we ask that you allow us to walk after your spirit, to constantly seek your word and your guidance in the kingdom of God, so that all things that belong unto the Father and the Son will be, you know, blessed upon us as well. And we decree and declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, check out my website at www.footworkministries.com. You guys can find that link when you add me on TikTok. So go to my page. You'll see it in the bottom description. Check out the books. I have nine books I've written. They're all free to download. If you have a Kindle reader or a PDF format type of reader, you can download it from your Google App Stores or your Player Stores if you, got, you guys got an iPhone, right? Also, I have prayers. At prayers and prayer recordings that's on the website that you guys can use. The prayer recordings can be used when you are you guys experiencing any type of spiritual warfares, like the sleep paralysis, witchcraft, all of that. I've done prayer recordings for that. So make good use of the tools that I've left behind for you guys. Um add me on YouTube. I will be putting this video up on my YouTube channel. So you can find that YouTube link on the TikTok as well. And you brothers and sisters, you have a blessed day and God be with you. Peace.